Hey everyone, this is a video about how you can use the AWS CLI, IAM Identity Center, and the SSO command to interact with AWS programmatically without ever having to create a long-term access key. I'm going to show you how I set up the AWS CLI with automatic token refresh so I can run commands against all my AWS accounts and deploy my infrastructure as code without using any long-term credentials. Once I got this set up, I was able to delete any access key I had across my AWS accounts I've never had to create one since, and now my goal is never to make an access key again. Woo! And it's a lot easier to set up than you might think. So let's go. Have you ever been doing something in AWS where you needed to create an access key? If you're a frequent AWS user, you probably have been in that situation. And here's what always happens, right? So let's say, for example, we're trying to configure the AWS CLI so we can start running commands. Maybe, for example, we're running the AWS configure command and we're getting asked for an access key. Here's what we always do. We come to IAM, right? We scroll down here to create an access key. And this is the part that absolutely cracks me up because what happens when you get to this create access key page is AWS basically just like begs you not to do this. AWS, bless them, they try so hard to save you from yourself. It says right here at the top, avoid using long-term credentials like access keys because it's not a good security practice, which is absolutely true. We have this list of use cases for which you might need an access key. And when you choose your use case, we get this nice yellow warning that's like, bro, like, come on, there's better options. You're better than this. One of the things that you'll see recommended here, if you choose the CLI use case, is AWS will tell you, use the AWS CLI version two and enable authentication through a user in IAM Identity Center. If you are like me, you have probably seen this warning many times. And if I'm honest, if you're like me, you've probably ignored this warning quite a few times because you're in a hurry, you're trying to get to the next step on whatever project you're actually working on. Maybe you assume, oh, this is gonna be something complicated to set up, this is gonna be a pain, I don't have time for this. I'm here to speak to you from the other side. I finally took the time to set up IAM Identity Center properly and configure my CLI to use automatic token refresh rather than long-term access keys. It was much simpler than I thought it would be. My goal is to never create an access key again. And other than that, it's honestly just much more convenient, especially if you're managing more than one account. So let me show you how I did it. This video follows a little guide I wrote about setting up automatic token refresh for the CLI. If you'd prefer to read through written steps, I'll just make sure to link to that guide below in my GitHub. Check that out if you'd like. There are a couple of prerequisites here, things I'm assuming that you already have done and ready to go before the starting point of this video. The first prerequisite, I'm assuming that you already have the AWS CLI installed and that you're using CLI version two. If you're not sure what version of the CLI you're using, you can just run this AWS command with the version flag and then you'll see all the information about what version you have installed. I'm also assuming you already have your IAM Identity Center all set up and you're somewhat familiar with how it works. If you have not set up IAM Identity Center yet, I have a video about getting the Identity Center all set up. So go watch that video first and then come back and you can get automatic token refresh going. All right, so now if you're still with me, I'm assuming that either you've got an identity center ready to go or you're not trying to follow along, you're just watching chaotically and that's all right. Either way, the first thing to do is to navigate to your IAM Identity Center access portal and log in. You should be seeing a view similar to mine here where you are authenticated into an identity center as an identity center user. Our goal here is to retrieve two values. So we're going to click command line or programmatic access. All the credentials you see here are temporary. So really, I probably could get away with not even blurring these ones out, but it just grossed me out too much. And who knows, perhaps I'm going to edit this video with lightning speed and one of you all could hack me before the credentials expire, but that's probably not going to happen. Anyway, what we're looking for here is this SSO start URL with the SSO region. Take note of these values and then you are ready for the next step. Open your terminal and we are going to run this AWS configure SSO command. First, it's going to ask you for an SSO session name. This is a value you choose. It doesn't need to match anything. The session refers to your identity center session where you're the identity center user with a certain permission set. I would recommend choosing a session name that kind of reminds you of that, that we're at that like identity center scope level rather than an individual account. For my example here, I think I'll just do Terra Ident. Center. 
For your SSO start URL, that's one of those values I told you to find a moment ago. So go back over to your identity center and then you're gonna copy the SSO start URL. SSO region, again, you can find that over with the values from the identity center. SSO registration scopes, I'll link to some materials below if you're curious about the registration scopes, what that means, what the options are. You're almost always gonna choose the account access scope, which is what we'll use here. Our browser attempts to open the SSO authorization page. We'll click confirm and continue. I'm already logged into the Identity Center. If I wasn't, it would prompt me to log in here. And then I'll allow the Bodacore client to access my Identity Center data. Great, we see the green success message. I come back over to the terminal and I see there are four AWS accounts available to me. Notice, of course, that these are the same four AWS accounts that we have access to in the Identity Center. When we started running the configure command, we were configuring a session. Once we went through that authorization flow and we're choosing an account out of the accounts available, we're moving into configuring our first profile. Keep in mind what we're doing right now is we're setting up a profile for whichever account I choose from this list. To start, let's start with this Terra study account. Now we're using the Terra study account. These are a bunch of my demo accounts if you were wondering. We see this message, the only role available to you is administrator access. The profile is the combination of the account and role. We had four accounts to choose from, but we only have one role to choose from because we only have this administrator access permission set for each of these accounts. The way that this works behind the scenes is Identity Center creates a role in these target accounts for each of the permission sets that you have here. This is all modeled after my real use case, so I only have this one permission set. If I had more than one permission set in these accounts, I would also choose a role. I'm gonna switch back to just sharing my terminal. We won't need to interact with the browser a ton more. Now that we've determined the account and the role, we finish configuring the profile with a couple of defaults, just the same as if you were configuring the AWS CLI with the AWS configure command. So we can set a default region. I always say US East one, even though it's not the region closest to me, I have no idea why I'm so loyal to it. So US East one, uh, default output format, I like to use JSON. For profile name, you do want something memorable. You want something that's going to remind you of the account that you're working in. And if you have multiple roles, you would want something that would remind you of the account you're working in and the role you're working with. Since I chose my Terra study account for this first profile, I'm going to name the profile Terra study admin. We can use this profile name when we run commands to target different accounts. So for example, when I run AWS S3 LS, which is the perfect example, and I use my Terra study admin profile name, I get a nice little list of all the S3 buckets in that Terra study account. As we're running that SSO configure command and answering those prompts, what's going on in the background is that the CLI is creating a config file for us. So we can run a cat command and we can see the file that's being created as we run through the CLI prompts. So we can see here, here's that profile that I just created for that Terra study account. And here's the session that I created. If you wanted to, instead of answering all those prompts at the CLI, you could just edit this file to set up more profiles or to set up more sessions. For this video, I'm gonna add another profile using the CLI, but just keep in mind, this is what's happening on the back end. Now that we have this first profile set up, you might be noticing that while we have only one profile in this config file, we have four accounts in the Identity Center, right, that we wanna be interacting with and running commands against. We're going to need to create a separate profile for each of those accounts that we wanna interact with. Let's take a look at how to set up a second profile. Let's try to configure a profile for that Terra DevOps account. We can use the same command here. So AWS configure SSO. The difference is we do not need to create a new SSO session because we're using that same SSO start URL, same SSO region. So I'm just going to reuse that Terra Identity Center session that already exists. You can see here, it shows me the configuration that exists for that Terra Identity Center session. So you can see we're gonna reuse the same start URL, the same region and the same registration scope. Click enter there. I already set up the profile for the Terra study account. Now I'm going to set up the profile for the Terra DevOps account. Once again, we only have the one role available, so we're not gonna pick a role. And once again, configuring my CLI, I'm sticking with US East one and that JSON output format. For profile name, I wanna indicate that this is the Terra DevOps account and this is our admin permission set and role. Okay, brilliant. So now we can run that same AWS S3 LS command. 
with a different value for the profile flag. We'll use the Terra DevOps admin profile name. And we get a totally different set of S3 buckets because now we're running that command using a different profile against a different account. To really get the point across, let's run AWS S3 LS again. And we'll use that first profile. So Terra study admin. And you can see the command runs using that Terra study account profile. Let's take another look at the config file. And now we can see we have two profiles, Terra study admin, Terra DevOps admin, and just the one identity center session that they're both able to use. I'm going to create my other two profiles real quick. I'll be right back and we'll keep going. Now in the config file, I've got a Terra study profile. I've got my Terra identity center session. And then I've got three more profiles, one for the DevOps account, one for my main account, and one for my Terra cloud projects account. And you already know where this is going. How cool is this? You can see how useful it is to be able to run commands against each of these different accounts just using that profile option. If you've used the AWS CLI before with more than one account, you've probably done this before. What makes this even cooler is remember, we are doing this without having to create any long-term access keys. We don't even have a credentials file that is storing any sort of long-term credentials, yet we still have all these profiles configured and we have access to all these accounts. How this works is that instead of using those long-term credentials, we're using temporary authorization tokens. And the AWS CLI is refreshing those tokens for us every so often in the background for the duration of our session. I'm gonna hit a little bit more on session duration next, but first let's look at something more visual to understand that token refresh process. I'm here in VS Code just for visual purposes, and I'm in that AWS directory, same place we have been looking at that config file. And we have this SSO directory that's been created here. And in this SSO directory, there's a cache directory. And in the cache directory, this is where all these temporary authorization tokens are being created and stored for us. Check this directory out if you want to really understand a little bit more about how this is working. If you're not interested in that part of it, you really don't need to understand all the backend mechanics to take advantage of the feature. Let's jump back to the topic of session duration. If you watched my video about setting up IAM Identity Center, this will be very familiar to you. This is the IAM Identity Center dashboard in the AWS console. If you own your identity center or you have some sort of administrative privileges over the identity center you're using, you can modify the maximum session duration to allow the CLI to keep refreshing your tokens for a longer time if you don't want to have to keep logging in as you're trying to run commands. The session duration is part of the configuration of the permission set that your identity center user has attached. Navigate to permission sets here in the menu. The permission set my identity center user is using with those four accounts in the identity center is this administrator access permission set. So I'll click that. Once we're looking at the details of the permission set, we can see that the current session duration is eight hours. So the maximum length of time that the AWS CLI could keep refreshing my authorization tokens for me would be eight hours. And then after eight hours, I would need to log in again. And I'll show you in a minute how you can do that at the command line. If I decide eight hours is too long or more likely too short, I can click edit right here, scroll down here to the session duration field, and we can follow this link to get a little bit more information. A few things of note here, the minimum session duration is one hour, which is also the default duration, and it can be set to a maximum of 12 hours. Like we touched on earlier, IAM Identity Center automatically creates an IAM role in each assigned account for each permission set. So my four accounts are all using that same administrative access permission set. So I have one role created by Identity Center in each account with that administrative access permission set attached. Lastly, when users federate into their AWS account console or when the CLI is used, IAM Identity Center uses the session duration setting on the permission set to control the duration of the session. Back over here, I'm gonna stick with eight hours for now, but here are some of the different options or you can do a custom duration. Now, next time you're getting annoyed because your session duration is too short, Remember, this is how you can come in here, check your duration, and possibly make it longer. All right, last thing. No matter how generous you are when you're configuring that maximum session duration, eventually your session will expire. Here is what you do when your session is no longer valid and you need to re-authenticate. Like so many things in AWS, there's a command for this. We're going to run AWS SSO login you're gonna see this error missing the following required SSO configuration values, the start URL and the region. What will work is if we run this command with a flag. So we can do 
AWS SSO login, and then we can do SSO session. If we use the SSO session flag, we can use the session name to log in. So I believe mine was Terra Identity Center. Let's see if that's right. Amazing. So we just go back through that browser-based authentication flow that you've seen a couple times now. Now I've successfully logged back in, my session is refreshed. You can also run the SSO login command with the profile flag. So let's do AWS SSO login profile. How about Terra Cloud admin? Same situation. Once again, go through that browser-based authorization flow and then you're logged in. When you have a lot of accounts and you have a lot of different roles, you can imagine that you might end up with a lot of profiles you're dealing with here. If at any point you wanna refresh your memory about what profiles you have configured, you could obviously go check that config file that we've looked at, or you can run AWS configure list profiles. This will return a list of the profiles that you have configured. Once you have your session set up and at least one profile configured, you have everything you need to start using the automatic token refresh and really making Identity Center work for you. I hope it brings you the same level of mental peace that it brings me every day to know we've got these profiles configured. We can easily use the CLI without ever having to create an evil, evil access key. So if you set it up, if you decide to join me on my quest to never use an access key again, I wish you good luck and let me know how it goes.